Hey guys, Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Today we're talking about prostate gland enlargement, or in other words, BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. And what exactly is that and why should you even care? Well, BPH is essentially a disease that is extremely common in men. In fact, in men over the age of 60, almost 70% of men have BPH. And over the age of 70, almost 80% of men suffer from this disease. What exactly happens? Well, in men with BPH, the cells in the prostate itself actually multiply and you get more and more cells. And then when you have all these cells, they actually join together and form nodules in the prostate. And if you remember, the prostate is actually a walnut shaped organ that sits around the pee tube and underneath the bladder. And as that grows, it can actually block urine from coming out of the bladder. And in some men, it can actually cause symptoms of bladder outlet obstruction. And what exactly are those symptoms? Well, you can have kind of two categories of symptoms. These can include storage symptoms or voiding symptoms. And they're just fancy ways to say it can be a problem with the bladder or a problem with emptying the bladder. And so when you're talking about problems with the bladder, you can have symptoms like urgency, gotta go, gotta go, urinary frequency, and sometimes even having accidents when you can't make it to the bathroom at night, and sometimes waking up at night to urinate. Or you can have problems with the passageway or the urine getting out of the bladder, and that can be often you're having to wait for your stream to start, you're having to strain or push to empty your bladder, you're having intermittency, which means that the urine stops and starts as you urinate. And really common is having a weak stream or like having just really not a strong force behind your urinary stream. So if you have BPH, does it mean that you're definitely going to have symptoms? No. In fact, some men never have symptoms while others do have symptoms that will kind of gradually appear over many, many years. So you might notice this as early as your late forties and these can continue to progress over time. So how do you know if your urinary symptoms are caused by BPH? Well, the short answer is you can't be 100% sure. While it is the most common cause of urinary symptoms in men, you can also have other causes like overactive bladder, which I've made videos about before. Sometimes it can be a sign of prostate cancer or other problems presenting themselves for the first time. But if you've gone to your primary care doctor or your urologist and they've said this is caused because you have a large prostate, there's kind of three ways you can manage this. One is you can just watch and wait and see if your symptoms improve over time. Two is you can actually try what we call conservative management. And there's a few things that you can try to do. A lot of these things are similar to the ones I've mentioned in five ways to manage your overactive bladder and avoiding bladder irritants because those things can also help with symptoms of BPH. And these can include watching what you drink, especially before the two hours before bedtime, avoiding bladder irritants like coffee, alcohol, and the other ones I mentioned in my bladder irritants video, trying to watch out when you're taking cold and allergy medications like antihistamines or decongestants. These can actually worsen your urinary symptoms. And so you may want to avoid taking them unless you absolutely need to. And lastly, you can try to double void. And what that means is you go to the bathroom, urinate, try to completely empty your bladder. And if you aren't able to, you stand up, you sit back down and go again. You don't want to push or strain, but sometimes just doing that motion can help you get out a little bit more urine. Another thing you can do is medical or surgical therapy. So we talked about watching or waiting. We talked about conservative management. Now we're moving on to medications. There's a few classes of medications that you can try. The first one and the most common one that's prescribed is called is a category called alpha blockers, things like tamsulosin or terazosin. These medications act by relaxing the smooth muscle in the area of the prostate to allow urine to pass more readily. However, there are some minor side effects. The most common is dizziness, and that can occur in five to 15% of patients. And then another one to be wary of is retrograde ejaculation. And what that means is that when you ejaculate, instead of having your ejaculate come out like it normally does, you may notice that it actually goes backwards and goes into your bladder. And lastly, if you are getting cataract surgery for any reason, you want to avoid these medications because these medications can make getting cataract surgery technically very challenging for the 
the ophthalmologist. So make sure you tell your urologist or primary care doctor if you have cataract surgery planned. The second kind of category of medications is phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. These are traditionally used for things like erectile dysfunction, but tadalafil in a low dose of 5 milligrams daily has been shown to benefit urinary symptoms. In this medication, you take 5 milligrams once a day. Side effects of this are extremely rare and they can include headaches, flushing, some uh, GI discomfort, back pain, or muscle aches. The last category of medications are alpha reductase inhibitors. And these are things like Proscar, or Finasteride, or Dutasteride. And what these do is they actually stop the prostate from growing and can actually shrink the prostate. There's a couple caveats. One is that these take about six to 12 months to see the full effect of them. So you can't take them and expect to see symptom relief right away. Another one is that there are some sexual side effects and these can include a decreased libido and a decreased sex drive and sometimes even signs and symptoms of depression or issues with ejaculation. A lot of you may have heard of something called saw palmetto, which is an herbal medication. Saw palmetto is derived from the berries of a plant called Serenoa repens, or a dwarf palm plant. And it's thought that it works by inhibiting 5-alpha reductase, which inhibits the conversion of testosterone to another compound called dihydrotestosterone, which causes prostate growth. And it also has some anti-inflammatory properties. And looking at this in multiple studies, the, our guidelines or the American Neurological Association does not recommend using it, but I have found that for some patients, this does help them. And particularly if they can't tolerate any of the other medications, this is a reasonable option to at least try. It has very few side effects and is very safe. All right, the last treatment option is surgical. And when you're thinking about surgery, there's a number of different reasons to undergo surgery. One is if you just don't wanna take medications. Two is if you've taken all the different types of medications, can't tolerate them, or are still having bothersome symptoms. If you're having recurrent urinary tract infections, and that can occur because you're not emptying your bladder frequently enough or well enough, and so that can cause you to get more bladder infections. And similarly, you can also get recurrent bladder stones. And if you're getting bladder stones because of an enlarged prostate, that's another reason to consider surgery. Lastly, if you're having bleeding from the bladder, from the prostate over and over again, that's another reason to have surgery. And lastly, in some cases, in rare cases, when the prostate gets very, very big, it can actually cause your bladder to be unable to empty. And that urine can then back up through the ureters or the tubes that empty the kidneys and then back up into the kidneys and can cause a reduction in the function of your kidneys. And this is called bilateral hydronephrosis. And so if this happens in the presence of having an enlarged prostate, you are pretty much going to sign up for a surgery to help protect your kidneys. And when you decide to have surgery, you're going to discuss with your urologist based on three major things. One is the size of your prostate, two is the risk of bleeding during surgery, and three is your sexual function and how, you know, how concerned you are with things like specifically retrograde ejaculation, which is a side effect of many of the surgeries that we perform for an enlarged prostate. So briefly, when you look at the surgical options, you wanna think about, are you gonna do this in the operating room or in an outpatient surgery center? And what does that really mean for you? So I think for a lot of my patients, I talk to them about the differences based on what their preference would be. And if they want to and are eligible for a procedure that's done in the outpatient surgery center that avoids them from having to have anesthesia and all the preoperative clearance that's required to undergo anesthesia. So it can be kind of a hassle sometimes to have to have a surgery or if they have other reasons like sexual side effects that they're concerned about, then outpatient surgeries are usually better in those cases. And those options include a prostatic urethral lift or also known as ural lift. Essentially use kind of a suture to help lift the prostate out of the way so that the urination can empty better or water vapor therapy of the prostate also known as resume. And this is essentially a procedure where we actually use water vapor to vaporize the prostate tissue. And both of these surgeries are typically done in the office or in an outpatient surgical setting with no anesthesia. And the nice part about this is that these are, you know, really 
quick surgeries. Both of them usually require a catheter postoperatively, but they do have pretty high success rates with very low reintervention rates. And what does that mean? Well, reintervention means that you have this procedure and then you feel unhappy with the outcome of the procedure. So then you go on to have another surgery for your prostate. And the rates, at least up to five years, are somewhere between two and six percent for both of these surgeries. These are great for smaller size prostates, specifically less than 80 grams in size. Then you move on to surgeries that are in the operating room, and these are usually for larger prostates. These can include a laser vaporization of the prostate or a transurethral resection of the prostate, and lastly, aqua ablation of the prostate. And these basically use different modalities, either laser, a cutting loop, with some coagulation or water pressure to actually ablate and take out the prostate tissue. All three of these require a catheter afterwards and some of them will require a stay overnight in the hospital while others may not depending on your surgeon's preference. And lastly, there's also holmium enucleation of the prostate. This is a surgery that's not offered in every urologist's office, but it's very effective and very safe in the right hands. And so if you have a very large prostate, this is a great operation that also uses a laser, but also instead of just ablating or, or vaporizing the tissue, actually removes the prostate tissue in, in its entirety. So questions that you'll want to ask your doctor or your surgeon before you have surgery for your prostate, number one is how long is it going to be before my symptoms get better? A lot of the times it will take up to three months for your symptoms to get much, much better, even after an ablative surgery. Two is how long am I going to need a catheter? Three is am I going to need to spend the night in the hospital? Four is what is my chance of sexual side effects, issues with ejaculation or erectile dysfunction? And lastly, what's the chance that I might need surgery again? And so ask these questions, make sure you're fully informed and find a urologist that you feel comfortable with. I hope this helps. And if you have questions, please comment them down below. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.